Oh, that's new. Yeah. This is the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, May 27th, 2021 at 7 p.m. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order. And I'll now introduce our chairman, Dan Silbo, to conduct the meeting. Welcome everybody. Um, we have a few guests tonight, but our Harbor master has got to leave quickly. So can I have a motion to move the Harbor Management Commission? Uh, oh. Can I have a I'll second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Mike, it's your show. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, good. Well, season's starting this weekend officially, finally. The weather doesn't look too great, but make the best out of it, I guess. We got 24 applicants so far. Our, uh, the Harbor Master boat just got a message from Rachel. It's going to be ready tomorrow afternoon, fine. So we'll either have it back tomorrow afternoon or sometime next week. Rachel was kind enough to ask the police department today to come help put the pennants out. So this afternoon we went out, put on the majority of the pennants. We have 24 total so far, put 20 on, 21 on, since three guys still owe some uh, proof of insurance registration. The shed's back down at the cove, got some nice concrete barriers. They painted the lines and we're ready to start the season. All right, very good. Is, uh, Kathy, is the portal down there yet? Uh, it's probably tomorrow. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? Kathy, is, is a little pop out station also there? Yes, so, it is. It actually got inspected by the state. Okay. Very good. And, and, and Mike, the DEP, the DEP boats there as well, correct? No, not yet. I haven't heard anything about the DEP boat this year, but that's not there yet. But the police and fire boat are in the water. Good to go. And just as an aside, Kathy, I, uh, I touched base with uh, Glassbury Parks and Rec yesterday and the um, no wake buoys were supposed to get installed over the weekend. I guess Riverfront Recapture does it, does it for Glastonbury. Oh. Uh, so he was going to call them again yesterday. So I'm not sure if they did get installed, uh, you know, in front of the boathouse there. Oh, okay. Okay, anybody have anything else? All right, Mike, you're good to go. Thank you, guys. Back Thanks. to uh, babysitting the low tight tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you later, Mike. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Um, bye bye. Yeah. So we have some guests tonight um, from the Grants Valley Foundation. I see Lee Stanton, Ron Hammond, and Louis Del Mastro, mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to do a little presentation to us for us. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Dan. I can kick it off. Um, thanks very much for having us this evening. Uh, mm -hmm. Good to see you all. We'll just take a few minutes, um, you know, appreciate being able to, uh, to kind of speak with you guys. It's been a little while since we have, and we want to mm -hmm. just do a few things tonight as far as, you know, a little bit, little agenda, if you will. One is give you an update uh, on where we stand as a committee, uh, kind of our progress in fundraising towards the vision of a footbridge at Mill Woods. Um, <clears throat> We did receive a quote from working with Close Jensen and Miller, so I want to discuss that briefly. Um, and then, you know, would like to really pick your brains a bit about ideas, uh, thoughts, just kind of brainstorming around additional fundraising opportunities. Um, we can talk a little bit about that. And then the last item is to, um, you know, request based on our commitment and our progress, if you will, with fundraising and the commitment of money to uh, to move forward with the naming of Field 2 for Grant Stand. Yeah. So that's kind of quickly what <clears throat> our agenda is. So quick update, Kathy, um, along with Derek Greger, the, the town engineer, mm -hmm. we had a meeting or two with Rob Brickley of Close Jensen and Miller. Mm -hmm. um, to talk about the project. I know they went down and looked at the site, did a little bit of work there and 
Um, since that time, Rob Brickley at CJM has been uh, researching the marketplace, getting you know kind of preliminary estimates and quotes. Early on, some of them were quite high beyond mm -hmm. what we anticipated the cost would be. Mm -hmm. Recently, he received a quote or an estimate from a company named uh, Bridge Brothers. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, probably the best ones so far. And it's in the range of about 212,000 to 225,000, a turnkey project. Mm -hmm. um, we as a foundation are at approximately 115,000. And Kathy, I know there's uh, some town funds as well. So we clearly have a few years ahead of us of continued fundraising. We took mm -hmm. a bit of a you know a speed bump here with the pandemic, mm -hmm. as far as our our progress and um, and enthusiasm, if you will. So that that you know didn't help over the last little year and few months. Um, we are you know based on this quote, you know we're optimistic and we are remaining committed to the vision of the footbridge mm -hmm. um, at Millwoods Park. And as I said, what, you know, we, um, you know, I don't, we, we can obviously take any questions, not that we have tremendous detail about the, the quote itself. It's a fairly straightforward turnkey quote. Um, and, you know, maybe from there, brainstorm briefly with you guys on any thoughts, ideas around whether there's sort of organizations that are friends of the town we may be able to partner with, any types of, of grants or any ideas that that may be out there. Um, I know you guys have been extremely supportive of the project. You know, mm -hmm. we're plugging along with our our um, our golf tournaments have been very successful. Um, right. Haven't had our softball in a couple of years, given the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. you know, we've had a couple of pasta dinners, things like that. Where you know we probably should look at other ways of doing those types of fundraising. Um, now that we have, I guess, a little bit more of a target in terms of what the the bridge project will cost, mm -hmm. but would you know. I don't, if there's anything else you want to kind of ask questions or talk about, but in my mind, maybe if we could open the floor to any kind of suggestions or um, ideas, just kind of put our heads together a little bit. And let me just mention that in capital improvements, the uh, Parks and Rec, we have $20,000 towards the footbridge project. So just to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Kathy, Kathy, is that approved funding or that's that's the upcoming budget? That's what you have right now? That's what we have right now. That's already approved. Okay. We got that a year or two ago. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I know, Kathy, you, you absolutely mentioned like there's no grant writer or anything like that on staff. Um, you know, not an expert in terms of town governance and yeah. things, but you know, not sure if there's any any thoughts as to from a from a state from a federal. Yeah, can we find one? Can we find a grant writer? You know. Well, the good news is that um, a different staff in on town hall on town staff have written grants. I've written grants. Some of my staff have written grants. Mm -hmm. So the writing of the grant, we can do that. We just have to find out where, where we might want to apply. And right. the good thing that you guys have is a, a, a base right now is you have a, a recent quote and you have money in the bank to go towards it. Mm -hmm. So if we, we can begin to brainstorm in our office where there oh. might be grants available and then look and see if we might be eligible for it because you have a lot going for you right now. Yeah. And a couple, I, I, we'd have to do a little more research um, mm -hmm. because the, the footbridge connects, not Park. only connect the two softball fields, but it, it, it creates a whole part of a walk and mm -hmm. a trail in the park. Right. And there are a lot of times there's trail funds Right. Or connectivity funds. Mm -hmm. We have a bike slash pedestrian group in town and they got a state grant for um, doing some walking and pedestrian and biking things in town. So there, are, there could be some options there. And our town planner, Peter Gillespie, 
mentioned to me that he was aware of the footbridge. So he wanted, uh, he, want, he would keep it in mind if anything came across his desk. So we can, we can begin to explore some of that. And if we That's find awesome. it, we can write it. Can, can the, um, how, how would people, I guess right now, obviously we know about the project because we've been hearing about it, but is there a way for you folks to, and I'm not suggesting the town's website, but how would, you know, how would anybody know about it if they wanted to make a donation? I, I guess, how do, you, how do you reach out to people that might want to know about it? Because most people yeah. don't. And I, and I don't know what that yeah. magic answer is, but, you know, without signing up the town and all that stuff, and I know we ought to be careful with that, but is there some way that, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's sports games, not that you go around with a bucket to collect money, but, you know, some way to promote that this project is out there and you're looking for donations and money? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, and I think what I kind of, you know, I think what, well, let me kind of answer it first. And then, you know, I think you're on a, a good path too. So we have had, we started in 2014 with our first softball tournament and then started in 2015 with golf tournaments. Um, again, we had a couple pasta dinners, that kind of thing. So we have a, a website, which is not, uh, particularly robust, you could probably use some uh, some help. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page at the, obviously, uh, I say obviously, but at the softball tournaments, at the golf tournaments, at the pasta dinner. So, we're, you know, we have signage and, and, you know, donation baskets out. We're obviously talking about the vision and talking mm -hmm. about fundraising and, and having, you know, some connections to people. Um, and I think what we've really been also, and, and I'll put a, maybe a bit of a question back to Kathy or the board, you know, I, I think, you, you know, obviously we're not going to execute on this specific um, estimate or quote right now because it's, it's valid for 30 days and you know, we're not there yet. But, you know, I think we're excited that it's one that's sort of within the realm of reality over, you know, the next several years. Right. We wanted to take that next step of the town council um, you know, I don't know if approval is the right word, but recognition of the project and, and that we're right. working towards that before we really more aggressively and, and broadly put out kind of a target of what our fund needs are yeah. and, you know, hitting it that way. Uh, but that's a, a, you know, I think a really good question, Mike. I mean, you know, you probably yeah. need to do more grassroots. We've had a really nice article a few years ago in Weathersfield yeah. Life. Um, you know, so have we been you know, really good grassroots. I uh, can't say we're, you know, we're the greatest, but, you know, we definitely have uh, a decent number of people who are aware of what we're doing and, and kind of going about that, but open to, you know, what do you think? I mean, and, and, and I know, I know it's not a town project, but I know, uh, you know, I uh, hate to say a sheet of plywood with the barometer on it that, you know, the goal is, yeah. and here's the websites that people see. And I guess yeah. I'm just looking for the exposure to get it out there. You got a goal now and stuff and it, yeah. and people, you know, make it just something yeah. like that, I guess. I don't know. That's exactly what we wanted to do. I mean, we kicked around ideas like, you know, also sort of buy a plank of the, of the footbridge kind of thing Yeah, yeah. for your name. But um, one thing, and, and not to like help me out with just, because I, I do, you know, I see this as a pure partnership with the town. So you're kind of saying it's not a town project. I sort of see it as a town project. Yeah. We, we would definitely look at it as a partnership. And we've done that in the past. Yeah. I think it's just, um, we have to be careful with the town, with the fundraising from the foundation side. We just have to kind of keep that clean and separate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is is there sort of precedent of the town raising money, or is that just not something towns do? Forgive my ignorance. <clears throat> it's usually been a mix over the years. No. Um, we've and and don't and just before I forget, don't forget that you can always talk to your state legislatures. Every mm. once in a while, they get funding to go to the town. Uh, I didn't want to forget that thought. Okay. But, thank you. Um, Kathy, I was going to ask you, um, the skate park, what, where did we get some of the money for that? That was a mix of um, fundraising from the students. Yeah. It got a grant from the, at the time it was the Keeney Fund at the Hartford Foundation. 
Exactly. That's something that because the uh, skate park is the uh, Keeney, it's the Keeney skate park. So um, they did that. I'd have to look up the rest, Deanna. Okay. I don't know if we got, they might have gotten some state money also for the skate park. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea to talk to uh, legislators. Uh, I know mm -hmm. the Little League field, really, our legislators got a giant chunk for us there. Yep. So, yeah. There's a big grant for that. Was that a state grant or is that federal? Little League, they've all been state. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes the, the legislatures will look to see if there's particular projects yeah. um, that are of interest to the town. Is that like, you know, I really appreciate the thoughts. This is fabulous. Exactly what we we're kind of hoping for. And it may be post call as next steps. Is there a way you can kind of, you know, give us some like sort of breadcrumbs that lead us to how to, you know, begin uncovering some of this and, um, you know, some contacts and things. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Well, the nice thing is with uh, the, the representatives and the senators that, that represent Weathersfield, you vote for all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you could literally just, you know, if you meet them at an event or something or, you know, somewhere, well, I guess not, maybe we're not right now, but. Yeah. Well, no, and I, I know the, the, you know, the, the representatives, I mean that, yes, I, that's pretty straightforward. Oh, I, was, okay. I was kind of thinking like whoever was involved in say the skate park or the little league, you know, could kind of yeah. say, Hey, here's exactly what, you know, talk to them for 20 minutes and try to get some real, you know, street smart insights as to how to go about it. I, you know, I don't know if yeah. that's the right avenue. Yeah, well, actually, um, if you know Paul Doyle. Yeah, no Paul Will. Yeah, we know Paul. Yeah, call Paul, and I'm sure he'll help you with everything. I think he got part of it. Uh, I think it was the state rep then. I think it was Paul. Right. And um, he will definitely connect you. <coughs> yeah. With probably John Fonfera and, uh, uh, but, you know, talk to Paul about it, and uh, I'm sure he'll kind of lead you down the path no. we have to go. That's great, Dan. I agree. Great. And some of the grants that the, the kids got, whether it was the skate park or some of those things were those grants were very were were for very specific uh, causes. Right. So I'm not so sure for that particular thing the Keeney fund would work, but hey, there could we could at least brainstorm here in our office too and see what right. we can come up with. Terrific. And a lot of it was what you were talking about was the grassroots too and um, mm -hmm. and having people, yeah, like you would say, do a plank, yep. different things like that. And, and certainly we could talk, you know, with the board members and when we talk about, we could always from the town, like right now we have 20,000 towards it. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't speak and say the town will put more in, but you can always ask. Right. You know, we can always say, you know, you're putting up, uh, I don't know, 150,000. Mm -hmm. We have 20,000. Maybe the town could put in 30,000 more. You know, I don't know. Right. But we could think of a strategy of how to ask. Yeah, and those are the those are the things that are going to make us move faster, for sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, we're at that point of like, you know, definitely several years out at the pace we're going. So we're looking right. to kind of, you know, a little bit of a um, little jump would be terrific. Um, so timely to speak with you guys. And I think, yeah. you know, um, again, the pandemic kind of slowed us down a little bit, even with the discussions with the engineers right. kind of getting together and all, but, you know, would, would love that assistance and, uh, and go into that next step. Is that something, Kathy, like, can I, you know, follow up? No. What's the best way to just, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I'm not yeah. saying you guys need to do stuff. I just, you know, no. we have a good call like this, you get some energy and then, you know, no. just want to make sure we kind of are connected as we move forward. Yeah, we could, Lee, we could sit down and talk, well, you know, we could talk whether it's on the phone or Zoom or something and maybe mm -hmm. identify some key areas to look at. And we could, no. we could check if the state's coming out with any grants for trails. I mean, we yeah. check it. <clears throat> and and we get we could also think of like hmm. 
Well, I guess I don't want to take the time tonight, but we could probably look at brainstorming a bit more on who we might know, or there might be a, a business in town, or there might be, mm -hmm. you never know, you might be able to find a big sponsor some way. Yeah. Yep. And I think, you know, to Mike's point, it's, um, you know, again, not to blame the pandemic again, but kind of like getting the word out more is on yeah. us for sure. Um, and that's something we need to continue to be probably more aggressive about now that we, yeah. uh, you know, we're at the point we're at. Improve the website, connect yep. better on Facebook, you know, those things. No, and I think even, you know, just signs that, you know, restaurants are starting to open up. So you got a sign, wow. maybe a jar there or some if the restaurant or business is willing to do that. It just right. it does get the word out because people see it. Yeah. And, you know, I think that. Would so, Mike, out. the way we typically fundraise, right, is by event. And and that kind of signage, you know, we typically put out getting ready for the golf tournament or years past would be the softball tournament right now. Right. <laughs> We're going to start advertising for the golf tournament and for whole sponsorships and all that. So that's, that's coming soon. Um, so I, I know you guys have a full agenda, so I want to kind of keep us moving along. And, yeah. you know, one, one thing, and, you know, would love, you know, your direction, but we, we, you know, as a committee, again, feel like, you know, here we are at a significant amount of money committed to the project for the town and certainly committing, you know, a good chunk of dollars and, you know, one of the things I know originally, you know, we kind of talked about the naming of field two um, in conjunction with kind of the bridge being done. Given the amount of time, you know, we're kind of under here, it's going to take several, you know, a few more years anyway. Um, and given our kind of our commitment and the progress, we would love to be able to take a step of that, of naming the field, if at all possible, and, and figuring out what maybe those next steps are, if that's agreeable uh, with yeah. you guys in town. There's no, Kathy, there's no name on it now, right? There's no. There is no name. Okay. So. Um, field two. Field two. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I think that would be fine. I know Little League Field, they were supposed to name the Little League Field um, after Costello, right? And did that ever happen? It did not. All right. Have they have Little League ever mentioned that again or? Uh, no, they didn't. Um, it just, um, uh, council had originally um, wanted to look into it a little more, and um, so it, I think the pandemic came in too. Mm -hmm. So I think there were some issues with all of that. Okay. So there's no issues with doing this, right? We don't have any issues from. No, I think I think the way to start would be to um, to first have me talk with the town manager. Okay. As to what process they would like to follow, the council would like to see. Um, and then we would, it would always start with the park board, that the park board would make a recommendation to the council to, uh, to name the field and you would give the reasons why. Yeah. And then depending on the process that the council wanted, we would go, we would work with the manager and then bring it to the, to the council. And there may just be some research and things they might want us to do. All right. So can you are they going to want us to show like, you know, samples of what we were going to think of like for signage or for, you know, we had shown some examples of some signage and what a memorial would look like, you know, and where it would go, right? That kind of information you'd need for sure, right? Yeah, it would be, you'd want to kind of show a complete package. Yeah, yeah of, you know, to put together a, a package of things and, um, and, and do it that way. So it's, it's almost a formal presentation. Yeah. Let me share my screen of what we did. Like, I guess it was a, a couple of years ago. So the uh, intent would be to name the field prior to the bridge being, it's, that's not going to, you would do that. You're looking for right. that sooner than later. Yeah, Correct. exactly. Yes. So I, I think I need to be uh, allowed to share. Uh, Someone's got control. I have control. <laughs> I heard that about your control freak, Kathy. I heard that. Yeah, but now you're asking me to do something I've never done before. Oh, <laughs> let me see. Oh, uh oh. No one shares screens? I tried to. I guess it didn't work. No, I, that's okay. Oh, uh -huh. I see. What's that? Now I can share my screen. Oh, no, I no, guess. No, it's not working. 
No, that's that's your screen, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, that could be. Hang on, let me. Mary, Watch it. We see your TED talk. We see yeah. your TED talk. That's what, I, that's what we see. <laughs> I'm having Mary check it too to see. I don't know how we identify. You. I think there's like a little button um, over on view, maybe, or I'm not sure. Unfortunately, they put a lot of advanced security <laughs> on the town's yeah. Zoom yeah. account because of a meeting that I held at the beginning of the pandemic that got Zoom bombed. Oh, so that's um, your fault. <laughs> no, yeah, it is absolutely 100% my fault. But unfortunately, I do not believe that participants are able to share their screen. Okay. Sorry. We can okay. follow up in a... In a yeah, we could, we could send it to you. And just, you know. you're right. We, I mean, we did some of that. I certainly yeah. would probably be want to be refreshed and, and give the reason of kind of where we're at. I mean, I know, Kathy, it, it, just my recollection from several years ago was kind of like, and I totally understand it. You know, there's a lot of requests to name things and the town has to have sort of a bar for, you know, what is your commitment? What kind of funds, you know, and that's why, you know, we think we've done a great job. We're, we're well over halfway there, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's I, kind of what we thought okay. that would Ron, can you try again? Yeah, I'll try again. I'm sorry, I just clicked, oh, clicked a couple yeah. things, so we'll see. And now I got to find it. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I, I went into some advanced settings, Catherine. I think I was able to work it around, but we'll see. Oh, Here yeah. We go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here we go. All right. All right. So this is what we presented last time. And this is who we are. That's what we look like. Um, <laughs> That's important. Yeah. This was just the concept, right? Let's see this. It's actually the location has moved a little bit since we've talked last. It's more, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but it's more up towards the middle of the soccer field there where the bridge <laughs> connects. Um, but to see some other, we got some other pictures it's similar to this design, the quote. And then we move into this, right? So these are just concepts, right? So he was a, obviously a big baseball guy, right? So love baseball. So we got this entrance to Cooperstown. We've got, you know, we know, like Kathy, you talked about, hey, we don't want to get too crazy on signage. We kind of like our Weathersfield style, right? So maybe this is Grants Way Field, you know, right here. And then the memorial itself, you know, something to do with, uh, you know, the Baseball Hall of Fame or, now, those are just some ideas that we had, but it's probably going to be a little, a little um, area, you know, right over here, you know, as you're coming, you know, from the um, uh, tennis courts on your, on your left, walking out basically center field to that big tree. So it's kind of walking up to this view, you see the tree here and, uh, you know, somewhere out near there, you know, that's our proposal somewhere out there where it's kind of out in center field. Uh, not that we want the, you know, the memorial to be in the field of play and balls do get way out there. But, um, you know, we're, that those were our ideas back, you know, actually it was three years ago, 2018, when we sh first showed you guys this. So we plan on refining this, right? And that's what it's going to take, right, Kathy, a refinement of maybe what, what this is, right? What does the memorial look like? How, how big is it? You know, there are plants around it. You know, what does it look like? Excuse me, Ron. Yeah. D did you um, did you say for where the bridge is shown on the map that it really is going to go off one way or the other, or that is the place? Did I misunderstand you? No, it is moving. Okay. To to where? Can you point with your cursor to about where? Can you can you see my cursor? Yep. Um, I yep. want to say it's about here. So it's going to be coming like in center field. To in center field. So yeah. You're going to be on the far side of the fence. Yeah, I know. And so is that fence going to be taken down? No, I, I think what it is, is enough woods to make a, you know, we're going to have to clear the woods right at the, right where the, you know, the um, bridge comes to the land, clear that out and have kind of a walkway that goes left and right around the fence. And, and they'll have maybe a walkway between the, the uh, fence and the, I mean, because it is a uh, bit of a decline, you know, uh, I wouldn't say a cliff, but. Uh, oh, it's a, yeah, it's a drop off. It, we'll probably it, it, have to have to have some kind of protection over there. Yeah. That or sh the fields are going to have to be shortened for the home run fence. 
<laughs> One thing I, I, from men's softball standpoint, I like the move in that the original uh, place that you have it showing there. Yeah. You know, you, you guys were talking about people hiking and I envision dog walkers and things like that, you know, strolling around. Yeah. But if, if these mountain bikes are non motorized, if they're going to start going with the way the uh, original map is showing where the, the bridge is, yeah. how are they going to be? Where if they're going from field one to field two, they're riding right through the middle of field two. And I know during a game they wouldn't be doing that, but I just right. envision a path being carved into the across the field. Um, well, so if it's that's why I think you that's keep a that, nice part. Yeah, I think you keep that fence up. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying for the where the original draw. Oh, yeah, where the original is, one, right? Yeah. Coming out in that foul territory. Got gotcha, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I like. From a men's, from a softball standpoint, it's nice if it's coming up to the fence. Yeah. That way, you walk left or right, and it's not pushing you to go through the middle of the field. I think that is a great point, though. Making sure we really fully understand exactly because it, it did move some, and I know that yeah. was work that the engineer, the engineers, kind of did together. We haven't been able to kind of go down for a site visit there since they did that. Yeah, and that was based on kind of the. You know, I mean, it's going to think about it. It'll soils. be a nice, the entrance to it from field one, we could do a better job connecting it to field one to the basketball courts, kind of like a, an entrance to draw you into it, you know, to take, take a walk over the bridge here, you know? So I think there's something with this new location that we could work with because the other one was pretty far away and disconnected. Right. So. I'm just thinking out loud too. We're talking about the fundraising, but if the intent is for the memorial and the signage, et cetera, to be put up before the bridge, it's a good opportunity because then it can kind of promote the start of the project, right. so people would yeah. become more aware of it. So, would yeah. is is it kind of your? Would it be a goal to say that you know? Because if it's going to take some work, you've done a lot of the legwork on it, but you know, obviously Kathy's got to talk to the town manager, et cetera. But right. to look at getting this you know, the memorial piece in and a plaque or something before snow flies this year. That'd be great. Yeah. That would, I, mean, I, sure. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there because it's kind of a seasonal thing. So which yeah. means yeah. You guys, there's a lot of work to be done be before between now and and that. And, and you'd use your funds that you already have to purchase yeah. what you need for the memorial. Yeah. Correct. And, yeah. and, you know, I think, Mike, you're right. that It is seasonally, you know, if we can't make it by, you know, early fall, then it maybe it does fall to next spring, but that I think kind of depends on the timing of, you know, kind of the approval. And, um, you know, I know if it's depending, if it's a stone that takes longer, I know from, from experience on that, you know, it can take, uh, I, I had a situation of ordering something like that during the pandemic that got significantly slowed up. So maybe, again, maybe we're in a better, time, but yeah, there's some logistics around that, Mike. So it really comes down to like the sooner we could get that design in that information together you know the better you know the sooner we can get it in front of people to approve it right so we got some work to do on that well we've um i know this has probably been longer than we had on the agenda but um is there anything else kind of for next steps or questions or other things we should talk about well, I think we want Kathy to talk to the town manager to get the ball rolling on this to see um, what else you would want us to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, we kind of go from there. But certainly because you guys are funding everything, that's usually one of the biggest hurdles is the money. So yeah. the fact yeah, that we're not asking you, for money for the yeah. memorial. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No. So, so Kathy, you know, please talk to Gary about this and see, uh, you know, what else you would like us to do or uh, no. at this point. Mike, I think that's a good point of, you know, if we get the name you rights to field too, then it, we can we can build around that and build the excitement, you know, build the build Grants Way Bridge to, you know, to to link it up to Grants Way Field, you know. So I don't know. Sounds a little corny, but whatever works, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's anybody else have anything else? Good. And just to get a sense from the board, you're all supportive of this, correct? Yeah. Yes. 
So yeah, just um, I don't I don't think we have to take a vote at this point, Kathy. No. Um, um, so certainly get the information from the town manager. Maybe have it for our next meeting. And then if we have to take a vote or anything next meeting. Um, okay. Hey, Kathy, fine. you have a copy of that quote too, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Great. can't thank you guys enough. Awesome. Um, for this evening and for having us and, and appreciate all of your guidance and assistance. Yep. Thanks. Thank uh, you. Thanks for all your work on this. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Good luck, yeah. Good luck guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next order of business is our uh, minutes. Move to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Monthly report. Yeah. How was the, um, Kathy, how was the fishing derby? Oh, <clears throat> it was pretty cute. We got um, 48 uh, participants. And thankfully, they caught fish. But how, how did the numbers compare to the typical year, Kath? Probably about half. We generally, now nah, we're, we're right about, well, I guess about 80 to 90. Um, but that was opening day of Little League. There was a lot going on. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize until the day before that that probably would cause some conflict with uh, kids' schedules. And we said we set that so like in January, yeah. and it's based on when they open fishing season. Mm -hmm. Kathy, on the field scheduling, um, you talk you're talking about the uh, new system, and I think we had talked about that briefly before. Does that have the availability for teams to even view? Not that they would change it, but view what fields might be available. Is that something that's part of the new system? The potential. For? I believe it does. Okay. I believe it does because that was partly why we we also got it. All right. Anything else? I'm looking at the uh, sponsors for the fishing derby. And one of them is Unico. I wonder if we should have told. I don't know if Lee has contacted them, but they would probably give some money. They're pretty good about that. That's a good idea. Um, about, the, about the field scheduling, um, the software allows like you to see the other fields available like in your sport, but it, it doesn't appear to allow for your, a baseball coach to see like the soccer field. Does that make we sense? Have, we haven't put our system out into the public yet. Oh, what it's a, the system that they're using this year is different from what um, was last year which is great because you can see other fields. I think you're talking about the Little League system. Oh, they have their own system. They have their own. System. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it, but they use something. Because what we do is we literally assign the field to Little League and then they, they then assign it out. Okay, anything else on the report? I, I, I was starting to say, um, you know, certainly let Lee know to maybe contact Unico okay. and maybe Judy Keene too as well. And um, I'm trying to think of other ones, other people that usually, other don't. Uh, but those two might, uh, you know, give them some money. Is that something that like men's softball would, or are they already involved with um, that? Are we involved with what? Do you run men's softball, Tom? <laughs> if you're happy with them, yes. Yes, I do. I, <laughs> I've been one of the main people that run it and I'm the president. So yes, for 
a number. Oh, of okay. Years. So, so, so I, are I, you I'm guys sorry. involved in the? Are you guys involved in the grant project thing? Um, we support the the project. We promote when they have a softball tournament. Um, my, I always threw a team in when they had the tournament. Um, that's it. We've discussed things that we can work together, uh, but we have not decided if, if they're going to be, if the bridge is through and they're looking to take another uh, project on field two, ma making major improvements, we're ready to be reaching in our pockets to, you know, promote um, a, a big improvement there. The um, as far as the bridge, we're supportive uh, in, in a number of ways, but we haven't worked with them uh, in any respect there. Grant was a great guy. He played in our league. He was on the board and he was the first guy to raise his hand and say, what can I do? And whatever he would take on, he was awesome. But um, that's about it. All right. Anything else? I wonder if like the, what is it called? Like the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Yep. They were just recently doing mini grants. They were like desperately seeking projects they could fund. Um, I don't know if, but maybe that could be something to be passed along to the grant way bridge. Sure, I could let them know about that. Okay, um, letters and announcements. We did get a uh, another email from Steve Randall about uh, handicapped spaces and everything Kathy has it. So maybe can, Kathy can just go through quickly what's being done down there with the handicapped spaces. Um, we lined, uh, the, what I talked to you about at the last meeting, we, our town engineer designed a plan that we could put the handicap portalette down there. And then on either side of it, we could, we could put the handicap sign for parking and make it sure there's enough space. So there's the handicap parking, the portalette and handicap parking, but enough space so you're not right on top of the portalette. Mm -hmm. So that was done today and the portalette will be down there tomorrow. Very good. Hopefully everybody's happy. <laughs> okay. Any other letters or announcements, Kathy? Um, no, I just was going to have Mary just mention the um, Memorial Day ceremony on Saturday. Oh. My puppy's trying to chew the mouth. Um, on Saturday, the 29th. Uh, there will be a solemn wreath laying at the uh, monument uh, at 10 a.m. The monument is on the North Brick Green. Nobody really knows the name. It's the corner of Knott Street, Hartford Avenue, State Street. And that will be followed at 11 a.m. by the uh, solemn uh, remembrance of the dead ceremony that's always held in the village cemetery typically after the parade, but with no parade, uh, we're just doing the wreath laying and then the uh, ceremony. And again, that's 11 a.m. at Village Cemetery. If the weather is bad, that piece will be moved at 11 a.m. again to the Pitkin Community Center banquet room. That's what we have planned. Do they still have the 21 gun salute on that North End Island? I, uh, not 21, but I, oh, I don't, okay. I don't think they have, I think there's three volleys, but I don't think there's seven uh, rifles. Okay. I, but, yeah. just they, they, they still we, have we a do, volley. Yeah, yeah, we do have a, a rifle team coming. I just remember as a kid, I haven't been yeah. down there for in a long, you know, 50 yeah. years or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, isn't there some sort of big thing going on next weekend, not Memorial Day weekend, at like the Webb Stevenstein um, Museum? It's like the grand opening of their um, rebuild. It could be. I, I think that's the, um, the new education center. 
that's been yeah, built. Yeah. yeah, it's their official opening and I'm not entirely certain what date it is, but they are uh, having some festivities over there. Yeah, I think it's like all weekend. There's supposed to be all sorts of fun stuff going on. Yeah. Is there free food? Probably not. COVID, <laughs> man. They're really messing with the free food everywhere. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Are, is any other letters and announcements? <laughs> okay. Um, so old business. Let's see. Status of proposed budget for uh, this fiscal year. Yeah, I just keep that on uh, until council actually um, approves the budget. So they're still working on it. And the governor allowed an extension till June 30th to approve the budget. So council is taking some of that time. Normally they would approve by May 15th. So um, I don't have any update yet. They're, they're just kind of looking at everything. And they were looking to see if some of the, um, the federal funds for COVID might <clears throat> help, up, help offset some of the budget costs. So they're looking through that now. Okay. So I guess no news is good news. Um, I see we got the field conditions report here. The Keisha Farm Committee asked for that as well, and that was supplied to them. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to that part of the, the uh, meeting, but um, they were interested in it as well. So and anything on the field report that anybody wants to talk about? And I just want to say I'm really I've really been impressed with the fields. At least uh, I've been on some baseball and softball fields, and I've been really impressed with um, how the fields look. And um, the, the grass is very plush. The the dirt looks very soft and fluffy, and it's just it's really nice. Make sure to send that recording over to physical services. <laughs> <laughs> And earlier, Colleen had mentioned how she her game was moved from the softball field to the high school field. And they're currently fertilizing fields. Mm -hmm. So that's why they need two days to do the fields. And that's why they wanted to, to not have any games on them. That's good. Any, Kathy, you know of any complaints from anybody or anything so far this year? We've been pretty good. When it doesn't rain, we get very few complaints. Mm -hmm. We've had the grasses high mm -hmm. during the period when it was growing and still is growing like crazy. Um, particularly for lacrosse because they scooped that ball up. But mm -hmm. I think they worked that out. Um, nothing major, a lot of the little stuff just gets taken care of. Okay. And we did have, um, We did have another meeting with Little League. I'm trying to think if it was between meetings here and um, just going over some things with them and that went well. It was, it was like last week or two weeks ago about okay. using the lighted field, right? On Saturday night. Oh, that's right, yes. It was, it yeah. was about a bunch of, they, they came in with the whole agenda. We thought we were talking about lights, but that was okay. Because again, you, we all talked about let's communicate more. So, um, so that went well, and um, and we're going to have a further conversation about lights. Basically, they were looking for uh, lights for Saturday night, and normally we didn't do six nights a week. We didn't budget for it, but when we started talking, because it had rained so much, we had days that we didn't use the lights. So, um, so we had those funds available, and we're going to talk with them for the future. Um, if, if they're not going to start using Saturdays, then we can plan for it better and, and talk about how best to do that. And we're going to just discuss some options. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, let's see. New, biz new business. Um, we're talking about meeting with the sports leagues again in June. Uh, um, let me ask you this, Kathy. Do we know if 
meeting's going to be in person then, or we're still going to be Zooming things? Um, I don't know officially, but we're beginning to plan. We're beginning to put together plans that we could be in person. So the first thing that I wanted to ask you, we can't do both because we don't have the technology for both. Um, but the meeting, we've already reserved the community center for the June meeting to be in person. But I can't do that until we, until we get the word officially that the meetings won't be on Zoom. I expect that to happen soon because there's a possibility of the council meetings in June being in person. So I, I can't give you an answer tonight, but I'm, I'm guessing you, you wanna be in person if we can be. Is, is, that a, is that a direction you wanna look? I think that's more or less returning to normal. So I know it's easier for me to walk up my stairs and log on to Zoom, but I think it's, uh, it's something to be said about face-to-face -face meetings. So I would rather, you know, certainly we're not gonna push it, but I would rather meet, start meeting face to face again. It would be good with the sports groups because there'd that be a lot of people on the screen. Mm -hmm. That might be harder to get a little bit of um, discussions going. Yeah, and then the way we did it last time is Rachel was writing stuff down yep. and we were referring to it and uh, that part would be lost, I think, so. So if we can, let's try to do it in person. If we can't, then we can't. We'll uh, either meet with a Zoom meeting or we can maybe push it off if we wanted to. We can, uh, let's see how things go. I did send out an invite to everybody. I haven't heard back yet, <laughs> but okay. they're in season. All right, yeah, let's stop. And we'll do a reminder again with an agenda a little later on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one thing with the sports leagues is they haven't, um, there's been a few, but there haven't been a real lot of people calling in about the farm. There's been some, but not a lot. So just so that they know that they do have to voice their opinions if they, they want fields there. So I will you know, let them know that. Um, next thing is Solomon Wells House. How is that going? I heard it's difficult to get booked there. Really? Yeah. We saw, my wife saw something on Facebook where people were having, I don't know, maybe it was just the day they were trying to get him, or is that true or not? We haven't heard that. Okay. We've been getting a lot of calls about it. All right. Um, we remember we did. When we opened it, we, we were still in a lot of um, uh, guidelines. Mm -hmm. So it was really out on the porch if you had a bigger group and the inside could only be for a small group. But as far as I know, we've been booking it and because a lot of people have been wanting to do the outside stuff. Okay. So yeah, if that's something out there, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, I think... Um where she saw it was my, you know, my son graduated high school. And there's people that want graduation parties, probably all at the same time. Well, so, yeah, if it, you can yeah. only book one one event a day. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's probably what some of it was. So she said, oh, ask Kathy at the next meeting. I said, all right, I'll ask her. So no one said, uh, we'll ask staff, but no one's come to me and said, we're getting a lot of requests for this date or something like that. Okay. Anything else with the Wells House we should know? No, um, it's kind of business as usual. We're going to kind of hold the fort because it only it's open June and July, closed in August, and then I think come September, if we're headed in the right direction, everything just goes back to normal. Okay. Could sure. we go back down a minute? Sure. I just wanted to see if anybody had any agenda items for the June meeting, because we can come up with an agenda, but I didn't know if there was anything particular that any board member wanted discussed. Colleen? 
<laughs> All eyes on Colleen. <laughs> I'm not really good about reading in between the lines, Kathy. Is there something that I should be commenting about? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything that, you know, do you want like, do you want to have a discussion about the Keisha farm? Do you, do you want to, um, maybe Dan, you can yeah. give an update to uh, the uh, sports field people. Yeah. yeah, I'll give an update on the Keisha farm. We can put that on, it'll be fairly brief. Um, so I'm going to give you guys an update in a minute anyway. By then, Kathy, would, would you have an update on the budget as well? Let's be timely uh, would, at that point. Yeah, we would have to by then because they need three weeks before June 30th to get the tax bills out. Mm -hmm. So they have to they have to decide in early June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we do want to ask again um, what the leaks think of the conditions of the fields and, you know, all that. And then availability of the fields. How is that working? Would we structure an agenda for them before the meeting? So, I mean, I know it's the last time it was obviously very informal by groups, but are there specific things that we would be looking to them for so they come a little more prepared? For, furthermore, maybe we should reach out to them and ask them if they could plant some seeds mm -hmm. and then we can gather because if there's right. a few groups are saying the same thing kind of you know form an agenda from there okay we could definitely see if they would like i think partly too at a previous meeting meeting suzanne had talked about um looking at how the fields are all divvied up Mm -hmm. And I'll maybe just check that out with her. You know, because, you know, the lacrosse and field hockey came late to the game. So they sort of got what was left. Yeah. So if we're, if we end up with just the fields we have for the next couple of years, is that fair to everybody? And, you know, the, <clears throat> the, the groups have, have worked together to share. So, which has been nice to see. So. Certainly, I think that's what we're trying to encourage too, that kind of they're all working together. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if we, you know, we can tout on anything that we've had ongoing discussions with physical services. I mean, they should know what we've made an effort to listen to their last, you know, their last um, issues or concerns, if you will, and how we address them. I think that's important to get back to them on that as part of, you know, what we're gonna discuss because Okay. That's the whole point of all of these discussions, which I think have proved very, uh, have, you know, proved very fruitful for both parties. Would it make sense to invite physical services to come? We are, we're going to, um, that is one of the things that was asked. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's so much of an overlap between the fields and physical services and the parks and rec and physical services that if we're going to, we could cut out us as the middleman um, sharing this information with physical services if they're just there, if someone is there hearing what people are saying, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, because um, then it's not coming from Parks and Rec and it's not coming from me. It's coming from people who are using the field daily. I think it would be valuable to at least invite them. And, and I think, I, I know, I think Dan had mentioned earlier, but I think we all saw the note about Tyler come, and I think that would be an important meeting for a council representative to be there as well. Sure, I can let him know, you know, what the meeting's going to be about. <clears throat> so I'll try and keep the agenda light for that meeting with this. Yeah. And the, the budget update and uh, the grants way. So just so that there's. Yeah, um, we might as well say it now, have the Harbor Management Commission part at the, like the first thing at the next meeting. Okay. Because he's not, he's not gonna stay for two hours, two and a okay. half hours. So we're not gonna punish him. <laughs> mm -hmm. As far as communicating with the team, with the teams, I, I kind of feel like we 
in sort of providing them some sort of guidance as to why we're inviting them, it's just really like, we want to do an annual check-in with you. We want to see how your experience has been throughout the season that you've, that you've had. And we want to advocate for you if you need it. And we want to hear things that we can improve upon. You know, I mean, it's not, I don't, I hope that it wouldn't just sort of be a, we'd like you to come to this meeting, but like, we want to check in and we, we want to, we want to help you and because that's basically what we're here for. I, I think I wrote something like that when I sent out the invitation, but I'll double check it. Dan, I sent, yeah, I don't, did you get that sense, Dan? If, um, I can't remember, I, but I'll, I'll double check like, it. Yeah. And I'll be sending out another one so I could, I could fill that, I put that in. It's certainly, uh, you know, as many of those uh, groups that can show up, that helps, that helps us. Yeah, I asked if they could send a representative and it's late enough in June that some of their games might, may not be as busy. Yeah, yeah, if the season starts to end. So if we can't meet in person, then that, the team, the groups wouldn't be there. We do different agenda for the June meeting then, obviously we wouldn't have the sports groups, correct? That's up to you. You tell me. No, I think we need them in person. So I, I kind of agree with Mike. If they can't make it, uh, if we can't do it in person, we'll have to put it off till July. Okay. Um, okay. The next thing is the Keisha Farm. Let me give a quick update on it. They had another listening session. What's like Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. And the first session had over 100 people. This session had about 25 or so. And there's only about four or five people that spoke. Um, and they just reiterated some of the things that were said at the first meeting, which was uh, walking trails. Somebody talked about, uh, you know, multi-use land, uh, that type of thing. So it wasn't anything really new. Uh, I will say there is a draft report now completed by the University of Hartford. It looks pretty good. We haven't released it yet because we don't know that we have enough input yet from the community. We got 26,000 people in town and we've got about 100 comments of how to use that one. So uh, we would like a little bit more input from the community if we can get it. And then at that point, um, you know, we'd start moving forward, but the, the draft report is actually very thorough. Um, there was concern from some of the neighbors when they called in about traffic and, and those type of things, which is understandable. Um, and that's really it. There's going to be another listening session. I'm not exactly sure when the next two weeks or so, but I'll probably know next week, either next week or the following week, um, because we have a regular meeting the first Monday of the month. So uh, that's where we are. It's not finished yet. Um, and depending on what we hear from the community, that's kind of what we'll tell the University of Hartford to look at a little bit more. The only other issue we have with the University of Hartford is the students are on uh, summer break now. So um. the price was right because we didn't pay anything at all, but we kind of have to work around uh, it's taken a little bit longer, but there, I'll tell you, I was very impressed with what I saw. I was stunned at how thorough things were. That, that's, Is so. there a way to communicate with the Keisha Farm Board um, in, in a way that's other than calling into a phone call? Like, can we, are there ways to communicate in writing? I think you can, because I'm not on Facebook, but I think um, there's a Facebook page and I think you can write things in right on there. Like right on the page? Yeah. I don't really want my of, comments public, yeah, believe it uh, or not. <laughs> um, but the other thing is you can just write them to me and I could forward them to Cindy Greenblatt. <laughs> okay. Just them to me. Yeah. yeah. If you got anything, I'll just forward them to Cindy. So, All right. Thank you. I, I mean, as board members, we're trying to be neutral on everything. So we don't really comment on you know, what people say, what they say is what they say, and that's that's it. And uh, 
from all the comments that we get, that's kind of what's going to happen at that farm. The only thing in general that I can say is um, I kind of wish the town would take a broader approach when they say um, everything from sports fields to walking trails to uh, some of the things have been about um, the, uh, the farms in back of the uh, firehouse. And I think we have to take a broader approach and say where in town would this best fit as opposed to what can just fit on the farm. So in other words, if we're gonna put fields here, how does that affect other things in town? And we're gonna put you know additional farms stuff here, how does that affect the firehouse? And so I, I'm not sure that things are being done in a comprehensive manner. So that's the only other thing that I am gonna bring up at the next meeting. I think um, we have to have a plan for the farm, but we also have, gonna have at least some type of concept for the town on how, the, how all these things fit into each other. So that was the only thing that I noticed. But I, the board members are putting a lot of time in. And uh, like I said, the University of Hartford kids did a fantastic job. So as soon as that uh, is public, I will get it to Kathy and she can send it out to you know, all you guys immediately. But I don't know if Kathy- Dan, Dan gonna... I would just say, I would say like, if you're, if you're struggling to get people's comments, um, or feedback about it, perhaps by offering some sort of email address or some sort of way that they can submit their um, thoughts and comments in writing might just open up the opportunity for those who can't make the appointment or can't make the meetings or don't want to wait an hour on a call mm -hmm. or just whatever um, are still able to communicate. And that way you'd have more feedback from the community. Just yeah, an idea. I think, I think there is a way, but like I said, I'm not on not on Facebook or any of that stuff. So um, I'll, I'll, like I said, send me the thing. And what I'll do is I'll talk to Cindy and I'm sh sure there is a way, but it's just bypassed my brain for the. And I think Dan, I know for the first listening session, they did have an email address that was a town email address that you could send to. Yeah, and you could send stuff in on the chat function too, as well. Kathy, I, I haven't been on the town's website in, in a bit, but. Is there kind of an update or a little section with a link that brings people back to that? So if they don't know anything about it, if they went on a town's website, is there like a Keisha Farm connection or whatever to get people over to that kind of following up on Colleen's? But I can huh? check. Yeah. I do not know, but I could check. I think there should be if there isn't. I think we've asked for that. I mean, that would certainly help people's input yeah. because that's that's the way that people look for things yeah. nowadays. And I think they would go to the website. I think that's kind of an important thing you might be missing if you don't have it. And it could be there. I just, um, I, it doesn't ring a bell, but that, that doesn't mean it's not there. And it's got, of course, even if it's there, it's got to be in a place where people, you know, not people have to dig and go down. They'll never find it. Yeah, they have a tough time with the town's yeah. Front page of the website because it can only take so many things. Yeah. You That's have to get special permission to go on the front page. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's an important enough subject that I think they need to maybe prioritize what goes on there. That's just my, sure. without sounding too sarcastic, but I think that's a place that it needs to be. Yeah. And we've asked, uh, you're right, Mike, we've actually asked for that. And uh, I know Gary was saying too, there's kind of limited resources that work on the website, Kathy. So for instance, yeah, we're the, down two IT people. Yeah. We only so, we only have three, and so with two positions are vacant. So yeah. we have one person so, off the IT stuff. So I think that was one of the issues. Um, the Facebook page and everything by the farm is actually managed by the University of Harvard students. So wow. Yeah. How are the listening sessions? Are they are some of them geared to different groups, or was this other one just open to the general public? Yeah, yeah the, actually all of them are open to everybody, general public groups, whoever oh. it is. And they, if it's from a group age, they identify themselves. Um, what they're yeah, from. I just didn't hear about it, Dan. So I was surprised yeah. how it was advertised, that's all. Yeah, well, I barely heard about it myself. I just- Because uh, it's not on the website. <laughs> there yeah. you go. I just checked my email and uh, just happened to see it and- um, I don't check my home emails every day because I really go crazy. But um, I just checked it Sunday night and they said, oh, there's a session. <laughs> so 
it's kind of tough to get it out right now. It's so tough to get the word out. So these sessions were originally going to be in all in person. We we're going to try to put something out and have as many people show up uh, as they, you know, and then talk face to face a little bit easier. But, you know, that's why we're holding so many of them because we want to get as much input as we can. And, and I think if the council is still on Zoom, which they are, there's probably no reason that they even could make an announcement at every council meeting reminding people of it or doing a report. Again, people might watch that. I guess I hate to be criticized later saying nobody knew about it because it wasn't put out there enough. And I know we know about it, but I'm afraid if you're getting that kind of turnout that it really isn't put out there as much as it probably could be. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you don't go uh, like it's advertised on a Facebook page, I think there might be an Instagram thing as well. So if you don't go directly to that, you're not going to see it. So that uh, you're right. It, it, it's it's kind of difficult at this point. Um, okay, did we beat that dead horse? All right. So <laughs> anything else? Any board member comments or? I have a comment. Huh? Colleen goes first. <laughs> Always. Kathy, I'm so, so, so happy to see the updated pool schedule. I can't believe you didn't mention it. I feel like that was what you should have started with. Wow, it's going to be open until August 27th. Wow. This Tentatively. is so exciting. That's, nope. that's pending budget. So just, I just, I put it out there and we'll see what happens. That's, that's great. That's really great that it's going to be open throughout at least the middle through the middle of August. And I had it on so my excited. notes. I did have it on my notes to talk about. So <laughs> but then I figured well, um, let me see if anybody saw it. Oh I saw and people are talking that there's no reservations, that you're doing pool passes again, that the swimming lessons are open. People are super excited. It's really honestly my mom's club is just oh everyone's super excited. Yes. So, woo woo! Yay! And and part just so the board knows, part of the problem was, I think it was like last week that they they changed the guidelines where they basically threw all the restrictions out. Mm -hmm. So it was good that we delayed, even though we had like a couple of days to pull it all together. And staff did an amazing job with um, working through how can we do this and get everything to work. So um, it's good to hear that it's getting that kind of comments. Is it, see, um, on the flyer, it does say that there's gonna be a limit of four people, um, four swimmers in each swimming lesson. Is that is that still true because the kids aren't vaccinated or are, was that something that maybe just yeah, slipped through right the now, edit? That's, yeah, that's true. We might, we, we don't know whether or not Every day the guidelines change. Yeah. So it may be that it might be able to go up a couple, but they want to be careful because the kids aren't vaccinated. You want to put too many of them in one area that they're close together. Sure. Are the um, are you able to ask or require the instructors and or lifeguards to be vaccinated? We can't, we can't require, we can't mandate it. We can strongly recommend it, but we can't mandate it. So it, it just, it, it is the way it is. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still very exciting. Yay. Yeah, well, that's nice to hear. Okay. Any other comments? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, th th thank you, Kathy, for sending out the agreements on the uh, boat boat operators down there. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Tom made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, second. All, right. wait, All in favor. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold on. One, one second. I just want to let you know that we, we had a, um, um, I wanted, to, when you did the harbor management stuff, I didn't want to, I know Mike had to leave. I just wanted to let you know that we had a request from a nonprofit group that does uh, kayak and paddleboard.
programs. And uh, they asked if they could come and, and drop off uh, like eight to, eight to 12 people to kayak or paddleboard in the cove and out to the river. And what they did is they, want, they, they were looking to connect up with the river boat, the uh, tour boat, um, slip, away, slip, away, slip away river tours that they would go out at like five o'clock and do an hour on the kayak or the paddle boat as a nature kind of thing, bird watching, looking at the river, that kind of stuff, and then do a sunset cruise on the tour boat. So uh, we talked about it here at staff, thought it was a good idea again as a pilot program. It's just a little thing. So we're gonna see how it works out. And um, they're interested in doing it for a couple of times this summer. So we're going to check it out and see how it works. Okay. But it sounded so that's a that's a nonprofit company that's not part of Slip Away Tours. No, it's it's a, a, a totally different. They actually do yoga on the paddleboard. They're not doing that in the cove, but um, it's it's something new. It's been in for about five years. It's been around, and um, so they just approached us. So we wanted to try it out and see what it was like. So they're not going to be given lessons and anything like that. That's just no, okay, just recreation. The trailer type. has the kayaks and the paddle boards on it. They take them off the trailer. They launch. The trailer goes away and meets them downriver and picks them up. And then the boat meets them and they go on a cruise. Because Glastonbury's got a relationship with L.L. Bean that you probably already know that... Yeah. Uh, they do lessons and stuff like that in the town obviously gets part it's a whole different thing then yeah no this okay. this is not lessons it's just it's just something we'll see we told them that we do it and see how it worked out we don't charge for kayaks or paddle boards to launch yeah so we're charging them every time they come 25 dollars okay so just a little something if you hear about it. I, we haven't even had a chance to tell the Harbor Master. It just uh, got finalized today, but we don't, it's, it's at night. So it's not during the busy times. Yeah. So we'll you see what not, they may only do it once or twice. They may not get anybody to sign up. Yeah, try it. I'm kind of yeah. skeptical about the nonprofit thing. Uh, just from what you said, but I'm gonna try it. Uh, and see how it goes. Okay, that was all I have. You said you are charging them $25. Yes. All right, okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> all right. Have a great weekend. We'll see everybody Bye. next week. guys. <laughs> Just this person. See you in Essex, Tom. Uh, all right, Mike. Look forward to it.